Okay, so I work on bees, and I must point out that I am a very amateur beekeeper, uh, and I've only been working on bees for the past four or five years, and most of my work on bees is about the genetics of their development, how their embryos work, and how you get queen bees and worker bees from, from, um, from uh, a nutritional change. And I'm not going to talk about any of that today. I, I want to talk to you about bees because um, I think that one of the things that, that we've forgotten in the world is the importance of bees. So, um, hands up anyone here who's a beekeeper. Is there anybody in the audience? There's one person. Ah, so there's a few. Fantastic. Have had hives. Have had hives. Yeah, the terrible rash too. <laughs> um, well, it's good to have some beekeepers in the audience. If I say something wrong, then stop me, because as I say, I'm an amateur beekeeper. But I want to talk about, bees are very important. Albert Einstein, you may remember the guy with the hair and the, and the physics. Um, said, I mean, of all the profound statements he said, he said that the human race wouldn't exist, uh, would only last for another six years if all the bees died today. Um, which I think is, uh, shows that, you know, as a physicist, he didn't know anything about biology. <laughs> I want to talk today about a problem, right? A third of the food you are eating at the moment depends on pollination. The USDA would have you believe that a third of the food you eat depends on bees themselves. Okay, it's not true, it depends on pollination. And in New Zealand, pollination is done almost exclusively by honeybees. And yet, in this country and around the world, honeybees are in serious trouble. So, you think about all the food that is on your plate at the moment, which I'm salivating over, uh, take away a third of it, and um, we're in trouble, I think, as, as a race. We have a symbiotic relationship with honeybees, and that relationship is breaking down. Uh, between 1999 and 2006, the number of beekeepers in this country decreased almost by half. So here is an industry where the people running the industry are getting out. And why are they getting out? They're getting out because of a mite which was introduced to the country about 1999 or possibly 2000. And that mite eats bees. And that mite means that the cost of keeping bees and the work you need to put into keeping bees is vastly increased. So we'll come to that mite in a moment. For most of the history of bees, they have had this relationship with plants where they provide pollination services in exchange for nectar, which they then take back to the hive and make honey out of. Pollination is actually the key issue that we have a problem with bees. Making honey is fine, and honey's great, and we like it on our toast, and it's wonderful stuff, and it's good uh, you know, stuff with manuka stuff, it's good for you. But uh, the real problem is pollination. So this country depends on pollination. Uh, as I say, the third of the food you eat depends on pollination. Uh, the kiwi fruit industry, which is a billion dollars to this country every year, depends on pollination. It's kiwi fruit are almost exclusively pollinated by bees. Without the bees, we have a problem. We have an a a nascent avocado industry. It's pollinated by bees. And beekeepers go and take their hives into those uh, areas, and the cost of hiring a hive from a beekeeper to pollinate a crop is going through the roof. So the cost of producing kiwi fruit and producing avocado is going through the roof because there are not enough bees, there are not enough beekeepers. So, apparently, according to MAF, uh, by 2015, there will be um, 72,000 hives, beehives, that are required, that aren't present, that are required for pollinating our crops. So we're actually in the position, right now, there are enough beehives in this country to pollinate our avocado and our kiwi fruit industry. By 2015, that won't be the case, which means that kiwi fruit industry will take a hit. A billion dollar industry to this country will take a hit because we're not looking after our bees. We need more bees and we need more beekeepers. There's one thing you can do after this talk is go out and get some bees. Now, obviously, you live in Auckland. Go out and get some bees and move to Tapuki and go and pollinate. <laughs> okay, maybe we're asking too much. What's the key issue here? The key issue is nitrogen. All right? New Zealand depends on its pastoral industries. The $1 billion kiwi fruit industry is good, that's fantastic, but we depend on our pastoral industries. You know, the, when Fonterra's milk solid price goes up, our dollar goes up. I mean, we, we actually, I think we should change our, our currency to actually milk solids. <laughs> but if you want to produce meat or you want to produce mul, uh, wool, you need pollination because nitrogen is fixed from the atmosphere by plants or by bacteria which live in symbiotic relationship with plants. And the plant that's important here is clover. Clover is pollinated by bees, and there is real evidence that clover, while it self-seeds and, and spreads with, uh, asexually, it needs that pollination to have high rates of nitrogen fixation. So bees are not just producing honey, pollinating our crops, they're also making our pastures, um, in some ways, productive. Going like mad here. So that's fantastic. So 
I'd like you to consider this um, as you sit there and eat your meals, that you know, a third of the food you're coming from is produced by, by bees, but in New Zealand, in fact, most of our economy depends on bees. All right? And the bees in this country and around the world are under enormous threat. Okay? Now, everyone sort of says, I mean, the, 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 the scenario put forward by Einstein that if uh, there were no bees, we would only live for another six years and then we'd all die out. We all go, well, that's nonsense. There's no, no chance in hell that there will be no bees. But in fact, there are parts of the world where bees are unable to grow. That the use of insecticides and other chemicals in the environment means that effectively you can't get insects in those areas. And if you want to grow crops in those areas, which seems like a stupid thing to do, but if you want to grow crops in those areas, you actually need to go and pollinate trees, plants by hand. There are parts of China where this actually happens, where whole fruit trees are pollinated by an army of people with paintbrushes who are playing bee. We can't do that. Those of you who are beekeepers are fantastic people. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, um, you should all be given a prize before you leave. But you're not actually the key issue here. The key issue are feral bees. If you go around uh, Otago, uh, around Dunedin, there's a town belt. If you wander through that uh, town belt, you'll find that it is packed full of bees. And they're not from beekeepers. They're feral bees that are living in holes in trees and in tiny little hives. They're probably small hives, but the place is full of bees. And in fact, until... Um, about the year 2000, 2001, the North Island of this country was also covered in feral bees. And then this beast, this varroa mite, came from overseas, was imported through some process which we don't want to talk about, and that varroa mite kills bees. It goes into beehives and it basically destroys them. It has turned bees from being a species that human beings manage but are effectively wild to a species that is obligate to humans. We are required to look after bees now to keep them alive. In Dunedin this hasn't happened because we haven't got the mite yet, but in the North Island you've gone for a remarkable thing. You have we've effectively domesticated an animal in the last couple of years through the introduction of this mite. The mite lives in the hives and, and when these mites invade the hives you can get a hundred mites a day coming into the hives, laying eggs, producing um, offspring which then go and feed on pupil bees and kill them. So feral bees in the North Island of New Zealand are effectively extinct. The only bees that are alive in the North Island of New Zealand are kept by these two gentlemen here and you know, some of their closest friends. That's a big issue because there aren't beekeepers out at every point, at every field in this country looking after the clover. The things that were pollinating clover in the North Island were feral bees living in old tree stumps and old fence posts and those have all gone now and we have no way of getting them back. The government's response to uh, the varroa mite was exactly the right one. Um, there was no way that we could eradicate that mite when it arrived here, and so they've tried to contain it, which didn't work, and they've tried to ameliorate it. But the varroa mite is a disease that has been uh, happening overseas for some time, and so we have treatments for it. So beekeepers here will be treating with miticides to kill the mite and keep the bees. But it means increased cost for beekeepers. Lots of beekeepers have got out of the industry, and our feral bees have gone. And I think uniquely in New Zealand, that's a serious problem because we don't have large numbers of other pollinators which will pollinate our crops and, our, and particularly clover. <coughs> Honeybee is, is the thing. Bumblebees might be okay, but in fact, bumblebees are under threat as well. So that's um, all doom and gloom. It gets worse. There is a disease in America which is currently, which is killed in the year 1998, killed 30% of the beehives in the country. Okay? an enormous quantity of beehives, and this year, another 30% are dying. It's a disease called colony collapse disorder. We think it's caused by a virus, but we're not sure. But it's not the only disease out there in Europe. There's a thing called nosemia, which seems to be killing a lot of bees. And, and